Okay, let's practice some of those letter shapes that we saw in our Casey the Caterpillar book. But before we start, let's remember a few things from the story. Do you remember in the story there was that really big tree? So I'm going to draw the side of the tree just here. And whenever we're doing our handwriting, we need to imagine that we've got a tree over this side. We always start right next to the tree on the left-hand side of our page. Now in the story, there were also some branches coming out of the tree. So we need to imagine that our line is a branch. Now at the beginning of the story, there was a beautiful butterfly. First she went and landed on a gate, then she flew down to lay her egg right next to the tree trunk, just here. So that reminds us where we need to start writing, right over here next to the tree trunk. Now let's practice drawing some more eggs along this line. Our eggs are going to be not too big, not too small, but they're going to sit just on the line like this. Keep drawing some eggs. Perfect. Right to the end of the line or the branch, and we're going to stop. Now, do you remember the part of the story where Casey the caterpillar had finished eating all the leaves and she'd crawled right to the end of her branch, and then she made a cocoon? and she turned into a beautiful butterfly. Then she flew down to the next branch and she laid her egg right next to the trunk of the tree. So when you're doing your writing, when you reach the end of the line and you don't have any more space, you need to pretend that you're Casey the caterpillar when she turns into a butterfly and you need to fly down to the next line, just like this. Now we call that sweeping down to the next line. So when you've swept down and you've drawn your first little egg, you need to keep going across, further along the branch, and you can never go back towards the tree trunk. Remember when Casey had gotten too big and she couldn't go back to her egg anymore. So we keep going across, we stop at the end, we sweep down, Finished. Excellent job. Okay, now it's time to practice the open mouth shape. Can you see Casey's open mouth? Do you remember the part of the story where Casey popped out of the egg and she was very hungry, so she opened her mouth to eat all of the leaves around her? When we do our open mouth shape, we start right over here and we do an open mouth just like that. And can you see how my open mouth is sitting on the line? That's where your open mouth needs to be sitting too. And you might also notice that I've started right over this side. I wonder if you can do that too. So keep going with your open mouth shape, just like Casey's open mouth in the story. And just hit your open mouth shape on the line. Now an open mouth shape is very important when we're doing our writing. Sweep down, right over to this side. Because we see an open mouth shape in lots of our letters. I if you can think of any letters that have an open mouth shape. We see an open mouth shape in the letter A. There's an open mouth shape in C, D, E, G, O, and in Q. Remember, when we get to the end of the line, what do we need to do? Sweep down. And we don't sweep down to here because we would leave a big space. Let's go right over to the edge of the page. Open mouth. You can even say it to yourself as you write it. Open mouth. Open mouth. Open mouth. Great job. Alrighty, the next letter shape we're going to try is the wide open mouth. So do you remember the part of the story when Casey was really hungry and she opened her mouth really, really wide, just like this? I wonder if you can think of a letter that uses the wide open mouth shape. You guessed it, letter O. Let's have a practice. 
So we'll start right over here on the edge of our page as always. And when you start your open, wide open mouth shape, you start with just a normal open mouth shape. So, I, oops, let's try again. An open mouth shape. And we're gonna join it up to make a wide open mouth. Can you see that? Let's try again. So we start with an open mouth and then we join it back up to make a wide open mouth. Can you see how my wide open mouth shape is sitting on the line? See if you can make yours sit on the line too. Just like this. Go along. And when you get to the end of the line, you guessed it, sweep down. It's actually also a shape we use when we're writing a number. Do you know what number might look like this? That's right, a zero. Sweep down. And stop. Well done. Let's work on our tall stick shape. Do you remember when Casey saw the big tall stick and she crawled up so that she could see really far to find out where she was? So when you're doing a tall stick, you always need to start at the top on the left side of your page. So start at the top and it's a tall stick. So you need to start up really high and you do a tall stick down to the line. Then tall stick and stop on the line, just like that. Tall stick and stop. Tall sticks are the shape that we need when we're writing the letter B, D, H, K and L. Sweep down and this time we're going to try a slightly different shape. So instead of doing a long stick, we're going to do a medium stick. So if I was doing a short stick, it would be this tall. If I was doing a long stick, it would be this tall. A medium stick goes up to about there. See how it's halfway in between the short stick and the tall stick? This is the shape that we need when we're writing the letter T. It's called a medium stick. It's not in the story, but we need this when we're doing our writing of the letter T. And you're finished, well done. Let's practice the tall stick shape now. So this is from the part of the story when Casey saw the tall stick standing on the branch and she decided to crawl up the stick to see where she was. Now we're going to draw the tall stick as if we were Casey at the top of the stick and we're going to crawl back down to the branch. So we start at the top of the branch and we go down just like this. So start on the left hand side of your page and it's a tall shape, so start up high and you're going to do a straight line all the way down to the branch or the line. Then start at the top, you go all the way down to the line and stop. Now we need the tall stick shape when we're writing the letter B, the letter H, D, K and L. Tall stick. Alright, so sweep down. I'm going to tell you about a slightly different letter shape now. It's not a short stick and it's not a long stick. I'm going to call it a medium stick. Now this shape is in between the length of the short stick and the long stick. Now this shape is in between the length of the long stick and the short stick. It is a medium stick. It's not in the story, but we need this shape when we're writing the letter T. Medium stick. It's halfway in between the short stick and the long stick. It goes straight down to the line. 
great job. And you're done. Fantastic. Let's practice our short stick shape now. This is the stick that Casey saw when she was crawling along the branch. She crawled up to the top of the short stick, but she couldn't see very far because it was so short. So she climbed back down. We're going to pretend that we are Casey at the top of the stick and she's crawling back down because she couldn't see anything. So always remember to start at the top of your short stick. So begin on this side of your page. You're going to put your pen about halfway down. We're not going to start up really high because that would be a tall stick. We want this shape to be a short stick. So we start at the top, we go down to the line to make a short stick. Start at the top, go straight down to the line. And you've made a short stick. Well done. What do we do now? That's right, sweep down. Short stick shapes are in so many of our letters. We see a short stick in the letters A, I, M, N, R, and U. And one more short stick and fabulous, you're all finished. It's time to practice the hanging stick shape. So this is from the part of the story where Casey saw a stick hanging down from the branch so she climbed down the stick and she went back up again. Let's practice writing a hanging stick. So as always we start on the left hand side of our page right near the edge and we're going to begin by doing a short stick and we aren't going to lift our pencil up, keep going. Then we do a hanging stick. Lift your pencil up. We're going to do a short stick and keep going down to do a hanging stick. We keep on going just like that, making sure we go past the line. We're not going to stop at the line this time. It's a short stick and then a hanging stick. Short stick, hanging stick. And we keep on going right until the end of the line, just like that a short stick and a hanging stick. Now we're at the end of the line, what are we going to do? That's right, we sweep down. So here we go, short stick, hanging stick. Now we meet, need this special letter shape when we're doing a letter Q and when we're doing a letter P. And we're done. Time for the gumnut cup shape now. This is the part when Casey saw a gumnut. She peeked inside and it was empty. She was feeling a bit disappointed. But let's try the gumnut cup. So you start on the left hand side of your page and it's kind of like a scoop. You start at the top and you scoop down to the line and scoop back up. Beautiful. So again, you start at the top, you scoop down to the line and scoop back up. See how I'm making sure that my gumnut cup shape is touching the line? That's what you need to have a go at doing as well. So scoop to the line and back up. This is a gumnut cup shape. The gumnut cup shape is useful when you are writing U, V, W and Y. So sweep down to the next line. And the last one. You're all finished. Great job. Okay, this is a fun one. We're going to do the possum tail letter shape now. So this is the possum's tail from the story, Percy Possum. And do you remember when Casey nearly fell off the branch and she grabbed hold of Percy? 
So let's have a go at doing the possum tail shape. So with the possum tail, we're going to start by doing kind of like a short stick over on the left hand side of our page. We're going to do a short stick, but then we're going to continue down to do a possum tail shape. So again, short stick, possum tail, short stick, possum tail, and keep going. This is a fun one. It's a little bit of a curve at the bottom, not too much. This is our possum tail shape. So short stick, possum tail. And this is the shape that you will see when you are doing the letter G, J, or the letter Y. Let's sweep down, possum tail. Remember, it's about doing your best work, not your fastest work, your neatest work. finished well done all right it's time for the Sammy snake shape do you remember Sammy the snake from the story let's give it a try so start on the left hand side of your page and we are going to begin here we'll go backwards curve forwards and curve backwards there we go that's the S shape isn't it so we'll begin here Back, forwards, back, back, forwards, back. This is a bit of a tricky one. Just make sure that you go backwards first because it's easy to draw this one the wrong way. Backwards, forwards, backwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. Well done. We're at the end of the line, so let's sweep down, keep going. Make sure your S is sitting on the line. Two more, one and two. Well done. All right, we're going to do the letter shape gate. Close the gate now. So you can see the gate and it's closed. This was from the part of the story where the butterfly flew down and landed on the gate right at the beginning. So we're going to take our pen, start on the left hand side of the page, and we're going to make a gate shape, and we're going to shut the gate. Again, gate, and shut the gate. As you shut the gate, it's going to go across the line. Shut the gate, gate, shut the gate, and you keep on going until you reach the end of the line. Make sure you do a nice curved shape of the gate, and shut the gate. You're going to need this shape for the letter B letter P. Really done. And finished. This is one of the easiest letter shapes that we have, and that is the ladybug spot. So when you're drawing the ladybug spot, you'll draw it just like this like on the back of this ladybug that we saw in the case of the caterpillar story. It's a really easy one. We start on this side and it actually needs to float in the air. So we're just going to pop it there. Can you see how it's not sitting on the line? It's floating in the air. And we need the ladybug spot when we're writing the letter I, when we're writing the letter J. Remember, you don't put it right on top of those letters. You need to leave a little space so it's kind of like floating in the air or flying in the air, just like the ladybug was. Sweep down. Fabulous, well done. Time to 
to try our tunnel leaf shape now. Do you remember in the story when Casey was walking along the branch, she saw the leaf that was curled around and it looks like a tunnel? We're going to try it. So start on the left hand side of your page and you begin with your pencil or your pen on the line. Then make a tunnel shape so it curves around to the line again. So start on the line, curve around, end on the line, just like that. Sweep down. Now remember, this is the shape that you need when you're writing the letter H, when you're writing the letter M, N, and the letter R. The letter R is a little bit different. I'll show you on the bottom line. Now, as we sweep down, we're going to try a different shape, and that's called tunnel leaf stop. We need the tunnel leaf stop shape when we're writing the letter R. So, we're going to do tunnel leaf stop, tunnel leaf stop, tunnel leaf stop. Remember to keep your pencil on the line to start with and then curve up. Well done. Okay, this is the feeler shape. Now you can see the feelers on the top of the butterfly's head. She has two feelers. We're going to use that shape for the letter F. So let's have a go at drawing the feeler shape. We start at the top, but we're going to go up a little bit, like a little hook. It's kind of like a candy cane, doesn't it? It's a feeler shape. Up and around and down. It's kind of like a long stick at the end, isn't it? Up, around and down. This is the feeler shape. Make sure that you go right down to that line neatest work and sweep down, keep on going. And done. Okay, it's time to try the twirly curly vine shape. This is the vine that Casey gobbled up in the story. Do you remember? Now, of course, we start on the left-hand side of our page, as always, and we're going to begin this shape on the line. So start with your pencil on the line, and we're going to go up, around for a twirly, curly vine, just like that. So it starts on the line, and it goes up, out, in, out. Let's try again. Start on the line, up, out, in, out. The last part even looks a bit like a sloping stick, doesn't it? Start on the line, go up, out, in, out. This is our twirly curly vine shape. And we're going to need this shape when we are writing the letter K, a lowercase k. So up, around, and a twirly curly vine. Up, around, and a twirly curly vine. We're going to sweep down. Make sure you're putting your twirly curly vine shape on the line. We start on the line, we finish on the line, just like that. Ready for the twig shape? Let's do it. Do you remember when Casey got to the end of the branch? She got so sleepy and wanted to make a cocoon. So she attached her cocoon to a twig and she waited for a few weeks and came out as a beautiful butterfly. So we're going to make the twig shape today. Can we start on the left hand side of our page and we're going to start on the left hand side. We're going across like this. 
Now, as you can see, this twig shape is not sitting on the line, it's floating in the air just like that. Because remember, in the picture, it's floating in the air. So let's go across just like this. We need the twig shape in the letter F, T, Z, E and Q. Now let's sweep down. We're going to try a slightly different twig now because in the letters E and Q we see a sloping twig. So instead of going straight across, we're going to slope up, just like this. So your twig is kind of sloping up a little bit. This shape is not from the story, but it's the shape that we need for a few of our letters. So let's practice it. Sloping twig. Perfect. Okay, we're going to practice the sloping stick shapes now. As you can see, there are two different sloping sticks. One slopes this way, the other slopes this way. So let's begin by doing this sloping stick. We're going to start about halfway down on the left side of our page and we're going to slope down to the line and stop, okay? So start at the top, slope down to the line and stop. It looks just like a slippery slide, doesn't it? So start at the top, slope down to the line and stop. Now when we sweep down, we're going to try the other sloping stick now. So we're going to try this one. So we're going to begin on the other side this time and we're going to slope backwards to the line. It's like a backwards slippery slide, isn't it? So start at the top, go all the way down to the line and stop, just like that. And we might try one sloping one way, one sloping the other way this time. Remember, we need the sloping stick shape when we're writing the letter X and the letter Z. So slope this way, now slope the other way. Well done, it's like a pattern. Great job. Now before you go, I'd like to teach you two more shapes. These shapes are not in the Casey the Caterpillar books, but they're important shapes for writing some of our letters. The first shape is called the flick. Now we see this in the letter D. So let me practice the letter D. We go open mouth, long stick, down, and a flick. Can you see that little flick there? We're going to practice that shape today. So we start just near the bottom of the line and we flick up. And see how we flick down to the line and then we flick up. So go down to the line and flick up, just like this. So practice your little flick shape. Looks like a little tick, doesn't it? And when you get to the end of the line, as always, you sweep down. The next shape I would like to show you is the point. Now the point shape is in the letter V and also in the letter W. Let me show you. So a V is a gum nut cup and a point. A W is a gum nut cup, another gum nut cup and a point. So see that little shape there? That's a point. If it floats in the air, doesn't go down to the line, it just makes a little point like that. So practice your point shape, floating in the air, nice and sharp. That's why it's called the point. Sweep down, we're gonna practice some more points. Lovely. Maybe halfway across the line, we can start doing some flicks. So the flicks need to sit on the line and the points float in the air. All done, amazing work.